Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and Shane and I'm on the customer acceleration team working on Microsoft Purview Information Protection and Microsoft Purview Data Loss Prevention. Today I really wanted to focus on this video to go through some of the steps required to create the data loss prevention policies for some of the different work streams that we have. So on your screen right now you'll see that I'm on the compliance.microsoft.com link. So that is our current Microsoft Purview compliance portal. And we're going to jump on over on the left over here to data loss prevention. Within the data loss prevention section, let's go ahead and click on policies and then, of course, create a policy. For the purpose of this demo, I am going to choose custom as that gives you a lot more control over what you're looking to have. And then, of course, at, before you can move on to the next page, if you don't click on custom policy from the templates, you're going to be hit with a validation failed dialog box here. So let's make sure that whether you're doing custom, privacy, medical health, or whatever categories you have and whatever subcategories you have after that, just ensure that you do click on, on the um, existing templates or the, the policy category over here too. So okay. let's move on over. For this, we're going to go ahead and type in just there's a demo. We're not going to save this. It's just to make sure that there's a name. And then so go ahead and find our different locations. The first section, at least in this video, we're going to focus on is the exchange email side. We're right now keeping the distribution group as all, but you are able to go here and choose a, a larger distribution group and then exclude folks from that from that group as well. We're going to jump on over to the next side and customize our advanced DLP policy rules. And then um, let's go ahead and click on the rule there and jump down to our conditions. So what I really want to focus on in this section is the fact that we have, over the last couple of years, worked really hard to add several, several more predicates into this portal. That way, whoever the admin is, if they're working to create the policy, they are able to go ahead and add in several different policies, including you know, sender is, jumping over to recipient is a member of, to file extension is, and even the area that we're most, I guess, uh, most commonly most commonly used by a lot of our customers, the content contains. If you just jump into that itself, you're able to see that we've now added trainable classifiers as a subcategory of that condition. You can add in those sensitivity labels as well as your sensitive information types when you're doing these uh, day loss prevention policies on the exchange side. So for this one, let's just choose a specific specific label for now. And the one thing that I wanted to show you is that we've also added in the ability to use and or capabilities within the um, configuration as well. So now you're able to jump in and you can do the, of course, the sensitivity label, you can do a recipient, and you could continue to add more of, of these different categories and choose if it's an and situation and or situation. So this is something that many customers have reached out to us to include, and we're just so happy to finally start seeing this popping up in the overall Microsoft Purview Compliance Portal. Now, that's a little bit on the overall conditions we have. Like I mentioned, if you look at my screen, we have added several, several different predicates here that you can use. We've also gone ahead and um, added more actions too. So from being able to add more for the recipient to um, you know, just adding an HTML disclaimer, you're able to go ahead and just do several new actions that just weren't available there before. And it's just things that you can add in and um, be able to just configure some of those actions too. So. Now on the action side, it's also similar, which is that you are able to add in additional configurations like following the and. And the reason it's an and is to ensure that you're not trying to have a battle of what happens first type of a deal here. So we, add, we include the and here to make it a little bit um, yes, simpler and to ensure that it's um, working on the back end as well. So we'll go ahead and put a name there. You can um, save it and you can move on to the next le next level too. What we recommend doing, of course, is that when you create these policies to always test it out first and walk through some of the policy tips. And that way you're not 
automatically turning it on in enforcement mode. So highly recommend that as you go through this process, you put it in the test mode and see how this works. So that's just a quick overview on some of the predicates that are available right now for Exchange DLP and some of the actions that you can take. So thank you very much and uh, hope you have a great day.